All right, folks. So what we have here is called an RF bridge. There's a website listed here, transverter-store.com. I got this off of Amazon, and I'll include a link below. It claims to go from 0.1 to 3,000 megahertz. Um, I have some doubts about that. We don't really need that much bandwidth. We're going to use this device to measure return loss and SWR. Now, when you look at this, there's a couple of different ports. The first is an input port, and that looks like it comes in via SMA female connector to some resistors, and then the circuit flows through some wires that go through ferrite beads. There is a reference port and a DUT, or device under test port. For our reference, we want to use a 50 ohm load. So we're actually going to use the one that came with my Nano VNA. The device under test will be an antenna for ham radio or amateur radio. And there is an output port. Now, for the input, we are going to use the tracking generator on my spectrum analyzer. And the output will go into my RF input on my spectrum analyzer. Let's go ahead and get this set up and uh, take a look. PCB Way, the one-stop shop for all your creator and maker needs. PCB Way has a number of solutions to help you prototype PCBs that include manufacturing and shipping services at a competitive price point. CNC milling and 3D printing solutions are available to help with any mounting, case, or enclosure needs. PCB Way can help with PCB assembly by sourcing components and installing them to your prototypes. PCB Way provides customers with a support portal, allowing access to staff that can help you with all aspects of your project. So here you can see two ports on my spectrum analyzer. One is labeled TG source or tracking generator source, and this is an output signal. And then you can see an RF input, and that is for the input of the signal. I have this set up per the instructions. You can see the reference, you can see the input, the device under test, and then you can see the output. When I ran this, I got some really inconsistent numbers, and I did some research, and in that research, I read that sometimes these boards are mislabeled or misbuilt, and you need to swap your device under test for your reference. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I set it up now. All I did was simply switch the antenna and then the reference standard at 50 ohms. Pretty simple. There were some other things that I found where there may be other problems with this board, I'm not sure I can recommend the purchase of this board unless you want something to play around with or tinker on. What I read is that each set of these resistors should be bridged together right where the arrows are pointing. I didn't want to do that, and fortunately, switching the device under test with the reference seemed to work for me. So here you can see the spectrum analyzer, the Signet SAA3021X, as well as the RF bridge and how we have it configured. I'm going to show you a quick walkthrough of how I configure the spectrum analyzer to do this particular test, and then we'll go take a deep look at the results. So here's a spectrum analyzer right after boot up, and you can see that I have the RF bridge connected. The first thing I want to do is I want to go into my mode selection, and then I'm going to pick reflection. This pulls up a table that shows me loss in dB. It prompts me to do the calibration open load. So I go ahead and I do that while attaching the antenna. I press and hold the button and then connect the antenna. It took some dexterity to be able to do this one handed. The next thing I want to do is adjust my frequency. I set my start frequency to 140 megahertz. We're going to do a two meter band sweep. And then I set my stop frequency to 150 megahertz. We're going to need to clean this up a little bit. It looks the way it does because there's some interference based off of my camera and other things like that. I can use things called markers to mark a specific point on the plot that will give me information about the frequency 
it will give me return loss information, reflection coefficient, and our SWR, or in this case, VSWR. I can tune these with this knob to the frequency that I want, or I can direct dial a frequency by using the keypad entry. I can add multiple markers if I wish. Each marker is a separate entry on the data table. Now let's take a look at our results. So here I was able to use the RF bridge to test my 2 meter HT antenna. I did a sweep across the 2 meter band. You can see the results in the table below. I set each marker at different frequencies. The first at the beginning of the band, the second in the middle of the band, the third at my lowest SWR, and then the fourth at the end of the band. And that gives us a nice view of what happens with this antenna performance across the two meter band. That's really gonna wrap up the video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching everybody.